So hello guys, welcome to my second cooking show. Um, everything's just gone mental as I was going live. Um, I've just put the kettle on to boil because we're going to need uh, ket uh, a bit of hot water. Um, so um, today we're going to be making paella. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who supported me in my last stream and as well as this stream. Um, I've got two little bonuses for you. A uh, couple of things I'd like to do that I think you'll find a little bit fun. You might be tempted to try, um, but you're going to have to wait till the end of the show to do that. So paella. This is a classic Spanish paella recipe. Um, I got it from the, I think I got it from the Tesco website. Um, so if you look, I've looked at different recipes and um, a lot of them are just ever so slightly different. Um, this one I tried a few weeks ago and I thought it was absolutely amazing. Um, so what we will need is, um, and you know the ingredient quantities, you know I tend to go quite rough, so you don't have to stick to this, but um, a large pinch of saffron strands, one vegetable or chicken stock cube. I'm going to be using a chicken stock cube. Uh, we need three tablespoons of olive oil plus extra for drizzling. I don't drizzle at the end. Um, you know me, I make and then I just portion up. Uh, we need 125 grams of chorizo, 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 whatever. Uh, 500 grams of boneless, skinless chicken breast or thigh for a mix chopped. Um, what I've done is the other week I bought a whole chicken. I portioned it up. And um, so last time I made it, I had to cut the chicken up, but this time all I had to do was take it out of the freezer the night before. Um, that's got skin on. I will remove the skin. Whether you put the skin on or not is totally up to you, but I would strongly recommend removing the chicken just for the consistency, really. Um, we need one onion freshly chopped, three garlic cloves, one red pepper, two, 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 two teaspoons of paprika, 250 grams of paella rice, which is different from long grain rice. Um, as you know, last week we looked at the number of rices there were and there was 40,000 types of rice, which shocked me. Uh, we need four medium tomatoes. Um, I'm actually going to use six salad tomatoes. Um, they come in a bag of six. They're not massive. Um, tomatoes are a little bit cheaper than meat, so bulk it out a little bit. It just makes a little bit more. Um, we need 75 grams of frozen peas, 250 grams of cooked prawns. Uh, now, it says with shells on. Um, I don't like the idea of putting shells on the prawns in the food. And you, oh, so I, I, I have shells off. Uh, and we need a small handful of parsley, which I'm not using because I don't have any. And lemon wedges to serve, which I do have lemons. Um, so let's begin. Now you will see me looking closely at this. Um, the print is actually quite small, but that's the best I can get. I might rewrite it. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need uh, we need to stir the saffron strands into the water with a stock cube. So let's go prep table down, which I think is that camera, which I think it isn't. Yeah, that's me. So you know I haven't got the hang of how I set my cameras up. So now I forgot to show you something last week, uh, which was quite naughty of me. Whenever you're using a chopping board, get yourself a cloth uh, and just wet the cloth through, just damp, not soaking wet. Uh, all I've done is I've run it through the under a tap and let me show you why uh, my table's quite good my worktop is quite good but as you can see this will slide about a little bit if you pop this is a very very basic trick pop a damp cloth down place your chopping board on top and you can see there it's not going to slip down let me just adjust that camera a little bit right so the first thing we need then is a mixing bowl you're not going to see all of this i do apologize i'm still working on camera angles uh so we need i've forgotten how much water we need uh hot water hot water hot water 
Um, gosh, why is it not told us? Set aside for sorry about this. Um, stir the saffron strands into the stock and set aside. Oh. Oh, made up to 600 mil. Right. So chicken stock cube. Um, to be honest with you, I noticed um, what saffron tends to do is just color. Um, it goes well with rice. It just makes the rice yellow and it looks nice. Um, but when you're putting a chicken stock cube in, that's going to color the water anyway. Um, so the saffron's not actually going to have too much of an effect. Um, but I will still add it anyway because the, the ingredients say so. Um, just interesting to know what would happen if you forgot to put the, uh, the saffron in. So let's get off. This is why I was boiling my kettle. Uh, 600 mils of water is to there. So obviously be careful because you are dealing with boiling water here. Um, so we'll just get our wooden spoon and we'll give that a little mix. Just make sure that's all in. Now it says a large pinch of saffron strands. Saffron is if one of, if not the most expensive herbs going. Um, this is roughly how much you get for about two pounds. Um, so how much you use is up to you but I'm going to use about that much. That's what I would call a large pinch. And then that can go in and then that can sit there while we prepare all the ingredients. So normally I would suggest I, I prepare my, my ingredients on camera to show you what I'm doing. Um, normally I would suggest you prepare all the ingredients beforehand. Um, but with this particular step, I would say do this first. Um, sorry, I forgot to ask you. Can you guys hear me okay? I've just plugged the camera in, uh, the microphone in last minute. Um, I didn't get a chance to test it. So if someone could tell me if they uh, can hear me okay. Um, and I'll just quickly go through the comments. Um, hey, Bill Valadry says, let's get ready, steady cook. Love Mini says, hi. Um, Mike Tedstone says, hello, Chef Penny. So uh we need to take the chorizo now i'm going to guess them at the egg the, the ingredients here this is a 200 uh, gram packet so i need 125 grams so that's going to be hmm, it's the first time i've actually bought a block of chorizo so 100 would be about there and about a quarter of that so let's call it about there so what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to cut it into uh pieces that are about a pound coin thickness um so and then i'm going to cut them in half so we've got nice chunky bits uh last time i made this i couldn't find chorizo in this format so i actually bought uh, sandwich chorizo and they were a lot bigger about that wide and they were very very thin and what I did was I cut each piece into four I'm just going to cut that there just to make it easier for me to deal with um, so I cut each piece in four um, so I had roughly roughly that size pieces um, I personally think it's what feels nice on a fork. Um, you know, if you cut these big, you know, you're going to have to be opening your mouth wide when you open them. And if that's what you want, that's fine. Um, you can cut them very small if you want. I'm struggling on these last few pieces. Um, so, but yeah, just roughly about a pound size these aren't five star hotel quality cuts 
these are probably a little bit uneven but to be honest with you because we're mixing it all up i don't think it really matters so i'm just grabbing a few piling them as high as i dare and then just cutting through them that's probably a little bit too high so you see this is roughly what we're ending up with just nice little half pieces and the smell of this is absolutely amazing it's it's like pepperoni plus so i believe this has got a lot of paprika, paprika in um whoops one piece fell on the floor so if i had a dog that would be consumed by now um so let's finish prepping those you could also have um cut the sausage in half lengthwise before you started that would have done the job just as well so and that's our first ingredient prepared and you see my board didn't slip at all um i i was aware last time that i hadn't told i don't know why i didn't tell you but i was just being a little bit more careful and i got away with it last time but i thought afterwards i'd better tell them because i am trying to give you tips as well so the treat so is the first ingredient that we're going to be using um by the order and release remove and then we've got right so let's prepare the chicken so skin simple to remove you just grab a piece pull it off it's a bit bleh, but there we go and i can pop that in the food bin and then that's going in my main bin and sometimes you get this piece underneath so just pull that out cut that off then we'll just cut along here and we just want little little rough cubes um, be very careful when you're cutting chicken because obviously with the meat juices it's a little bit slimy and uh, it's a lot easier to slip so remember that when we cut we don't cut that in a downward motion um, the knife doesn't work very well downwards you need to have the rocking motion and then if you've got a good knife that will cut through that simply so I'm doing this in roughly centimeter chunks um, again how you want to do is up to you and I think that might be a little bit light on the chicken there I'm not sure if that's 500 grams um, but that's absolutely fine um, replacing this I'm aware that my first two dishes are not very vegetarian friendly and I wonder if there's a vegetarian, maybe you could use corn if you don't eat chicken. Um, but then you couldn't really replace the chorizo with anything and still call it a paella. So I would suggest that this is possibly a no-go as far as vegetarians are concerned. Um, but don't worry, the two bonuses that I'm giving you um, are both well one is vegan friendly and one is vegetarian friendly um so i've just been handling chicken uh, which means my hands are a little bit slimy so i'm just going to give them a quick wash um just to get slime off not the slime the the meat juices so whoops and i can't reach my towel now I really need a set of headphones that's gonna like reach further. Oh. Sorry guys, I do apologize. I must have just knocked something as I pulled. 
Um, and I also noticed that the background I had wasn't actually mine. Um, so I do apologize for that. Uh, right, so that's the chicken prepared, uh, which is going to be the next thing. Uh, the next is going to be the onion. So I don't know if you remember from last time, guys. Uh, I'm going to cut this onion so that it doesn't make us cry. And the way I do that is I cut so that the root is still on. I know you can't see that too well. And this is a larger onion than I probably need. So I'm going to cut this, what I'm calling industry standard. And the way you would do that is you would pull the top and then you could just peel that off like so. This isn't the freshest onion, but if it was really fresh, that layer would just peel off very easily. Um, obviously, when you're cutting these, you know, if you're working in a restaurant and you're cutting these for... Uh, on a mass scale, you know you're going to chop them, so you're not really bothered about the appearance. Um, so that would be absolutely sufficient. Um, I'm just going to get myself another plate because. So, cutting in half through the root, and then we cut into the onion aiming towards the center of the onion make two incisions or however many you want the more cuts you make the finer the chop will be And there we go, we've got some beautiful diced onion there. And then a big nice wide knife. Oh, I've got a couple of bits there I missed. So, centre of the onion. Two incisions. Well, for this size onion, it's two incisions. And I nearly cut my thumb off there because I was holding it wrong. I should have been holding my thumb behind me like that. I was actually holding my thumb there. So be careful about where, where you put your fingers. Otherwise you'll have an accident. Right, so. Lovely. And the onions done Put a lot of onion going in there but i quite like onion um so we find the chicken stir in the rice so we'll do the rice right so that's all the prep oh, garlic as well so the recipe calls for three cloves of garlic um i've got four actually I had six there I had a couple of little ones um as i explained before with garlic I really like garlic. So what I tend to do is whatever the recipe says, I'll put in one clove extra. And this isn't the best garlic, I'm afraid. It's a bit squidgy. That's okay, we'll get away with that. So there's two. Cut the end off there. Make it easier to peel. Now, I did read somewhere, so I've never, never tried this. I read somewhere that if you soak garlic in hot water for about five, ten minutes, it makes it a lot easier to peel. Not ever put that to the test. I only read it the other day, but I don't really have too much trouble peeling it. So, crush garlic, pop your knife over the top of it, smash your knife, crush garlic. Like so, and did lose a little bit there. And what we'll do is we'll just 
run our knife through there a little bit just to catch the bigger pieces. And how simple was that? So, over to the uh, cooker, and we will start with frying the chorizo. So for this, I'm going to need, now, we mentioned, we talked about pans before. Um, I'm using my wok because I really like my wok. Um, it's a large pan, I can shoot things around, and it's just really nice. Um, so, the recipe calls for three tablespoons of olive oil. But in actual fact, you're going to need three separate tablespoons of oil. Um, it's quite interesting in that what we do is we put in one tablespoon, roughly, and then we fry off the chorizo, chorizo, and then we remove that. We then add a bit more oil. And then we do the chicken and then we do some more stuff and then we we add more oil so we're using three tablespoons in total and i'm just warming up the oil and then i'm going to turn it down i want sizzle and in goes the chorizo, chorizo and we just keep tossing that around and what's going to happen? Oh, oh, that's beautiful. So probably about a medium thing. The smell of the chorizo is coming out really nice, really strong. So we're just going to fry that, keep that turning. And what that's going to do is the the fats and that in the in the chorizo is going to just come out. So you'll end up with. If you can see there, that's how much oil there is at the moment. Um, but you'll see it's probably going to double and it's all going to turn a nice red colour. And that chorizo should go a little bit crispy. And then when you put all the stock in and cook the rice, it's then going to rehydrate the chorizo. So it's um, quite an interesting process. There's more liquid coming out now. So it's probably double the liquid come out now. And keep that going, keep it turning. <coughs> if you do turn away from it, don't turn away too quick, too long. Uh, I'm just off just to get a drink. Lovely. Uh, I'm not drinking anything, I'm not like... Um, Who's that guy that TV chef used to drink lots of wine? Look at that, that's the uh, fat that's coming off the tree. So uh, I'm trying to show you. Up. So, um, oh, I cannot remember his name. So we've got uh, Love Mini says yes, hello. And we've got Natasha says hello, how are you all? Uh, so keeping this going, if you leave it for too long without stirring it, you're going to burn it or and or stick it to the bottom of the pan. And uh, there's all the juices coming out. That's going to be absolutely wonderful. So you'll see that when we put the chicken in the next stage, it's going to turn the chicken yellow, the orange colour. Uh, so... Uh, Tess ate to Floyd. Uh, yeah, Keith Floyd. Because they used to do comedy shows and they used, they'd have a sketch of Keith Floyd absolutely drunk. Um, I don't know if he did actually get drunk. But, right, so I think that's just about ready. It's starting to, you can see it's just starting to go a little bit crispy. And all those oils have been, look at that. See, I don't call that fat, I call that juices. Um, so when we put through the next stage, that's going to be absolutely wonderful. Right, so what we need to do 
is we need to take the chorizo out and obviously we want to keep as much oil in the pan as we can so what I'm going to do is there might be a little bit no it's not going to be off camera uh, I'm just going to put a piece of kitchen roll on the on the counter and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull hold the pan one way and I'm just going to pull this just to one side and then just pop the actually should put a bowl in shouldn't I sorry that's my bad so let's put a piece of the kitchen roll in a bowl and then what we can do is we can just just let the oil drain down and we just want to take the chorizo out do you pronounce to to chorizo? Chorizo. Are there Italians watching this, fuming because I'm pronouncing it wrong? So just give that a second. So obviously, whatever happens, we're not gonna we're not gonna save all the oil. Um, this is why I'm using kitchen. Oil. That's fine there. So step two is to uh, that's five, five, eight, three minutes until crisp. The oil has been released. Remove the treat so and drain on kitchen paper. Leave the oil in the pan. Stir the chicken into the pan and fry over a high heat for seven to eight minutes. So we're going to wop the heat up. Uh, Natasha says can't pronounce that either. LOL. So, chicken in the pan. I know it's hot enough because it's sizzled. It's in the pan. And again, I'm going to keep this moving because I don't want to burn it. And can you see the colour of the chicken straight away? Still that lovely. I'm trying to get some good light on it. But, um, so, now when we have a high heat, it doesn't mean to turn the hog up full. It means to turn it so that the the flames are coming up and hitting all of the pan. Because at the higher, well, especially this one being a gas hog, the higher you turn the heat, the wider the flames come out. Um, so, nice and high heat. You can see it straight away. That chicken is pretty much cooked on the outside. And we just want to keep it going, get the heat through. Put it cooked all the way through. Now I talked about sweating last week. Um, you don't really want to sweat this, you just want to keep it moving. It's a little tiny bit lazy essentially because they're, they're on the move. And right, as you tell when this is cooked, if you squish a piece of chicken, can you see how that's bouncy? Probably not, but it's very, very fancy. Um, once it stops being fancy, it becomes a bit more solid. You know it's cooked all the way through. So that's still raw in the middle. Uh, now there's a, there's a trick about learning how to how a steak is cooked. The raw steak should feel like this part of your skin and then when it's cooked and then a uh, well cooked steak can feel more like this. It's very similar with this chicken. Um, but if you do it more by feel, if it's slightly undercooked, it's not the end of the world because we're going to be adding stock and we're going to be continuing to cook it. But I just want to get this, this is basically seasoning and just getting it roughly cooked. Um, so it's a little bit high because there's a bit of smoke coming off the frying pan and yeah it's a little bit high um, and obviously it's a pretty hot to see a first piece of flame which I certainly don't want to do live on camera. One of the good things about using headphones is I can kind of use it as a hairband 
I'm like, hey, it's just coming forward, so I just wanted to see that. So that's coming along really nicely now. But what shouldn't be too much more fat coming off this because chicken breast is a lean meat. And the smell is fantastic. Mm. Mm. So I just feel one of those really good pieces. That's nice. Could do maybe a little bit, could get away with a little bit longer. It's not crispy like crispy bacon, but right. that's starting to cook now. It's still a little bit fancy. We can um, you want to put it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give the, um, uh, the, the plate that I put the chicken on just a quick wipe over. Well, that's a wash. Because I'm, I want to reuse the plate because I'm going to have to take the chicken out. And obviously if I put cooked chicken onto a plate that's got raw chicken juices on it, that's just going to be food poisoning. So let me just check the next stage. So the techniques are found uh, to a bowl and then cook through. Transfer the chicken to a bowl and set aside. So when this is done, we'll take the chicken out, just like we did with the chorizo. And that is almost cooked. If you really are not sure, find the biggest piece of chicken you can and cut it in half. If it looks cooked, you know it's done. If the biggest piece is cooked, you know all the smaller pieces are as well. Um, ooh. Doesn't matter that I've got little bits falling off. Right, so the easy way to do this is going to be with a spoon with holes in, of which I do not have a plastic spoon with holes in. So, I'm going to have to cheat. Oh, I have a metal spoon. So, I would not recommend putting a metal spoon into a nice big pan, but I actually don't have plastic spoon. So, so that's something for my wish list. Probably get that next week. You know, I have been um, I've been looking for whisks, plastic whisks. I've got a nice whisk. Um, I like to occasionally do egg fried rice and I cook the egg in the pan. Um, what I do is I'm constantly whisking the egg until it's cooked so that it doesn't form big lumps. I just want a nice smooth egg going all the way through. So obviously the last thing I want to do is, um, is scratch in this non-stick pan with a metal whisk. So I've been looking for a plastic whisk and until today I could not find one anywhere. So I managed to find one. So we've got the chicken out. We now need to put another tablespoon uh, into the uh, into the pan, and then we're going to fry off the onions and the garlic. So one more can of uh, that. Just be careful. And we're going to cook off the onions in exactly the same way until they're softened and just starting to colour. 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 They said cover. I don't know why. So, onions and garlic. There we go. And we just now you can see the colour coming through from the oil. Absolutely beautiful. 
so it's going to season the onions and the garlic and the chicken has been seasoned with this lovely pinky yellow orangey colour now you can put a lid on these and just sweat them out the fact I'm actually going to um, I was going to toss them around the pan in the same way that you do that's the wrong pan for that I mean the same way that I did the chicken but to be honest with you if I just sweat those for a little bit it just gives me a chance just to catch up on the recipe um, make sure I know what I'm doing next um, right so we actually need to um, chop a pepper I should have done that beforehand so let me turn the heat down and then that will take a little bit longer to sweat out and that will give me more time to pepper and I can show you a little hack that I learned nothing major nothing totally mind-blowing um, but you might like to think it's fun just the way that I did so let's change the camera so chopping pepper easy way you could cut around the top pull everything out the easy way is just to cut that stalk off place it on like that now you'll see there's three lines down the pepper if you were to cut down those lines and then you can just peel that back and there we go we've got a de-seeded pepper in just three easy stages so let's get another plate out so we're going to slice the peppers and then we're going to dice them remember when we did the potato we slice we chip and then we dice well obviously the slicing comes in the form of cutting it down the three sides then we chip it and then we dice i'm just going to give my onions a quick stir smelling absolutely beautiful i really wish i could share this smell with you absolutely fantastic so so there's our slices there's our chips so to speak although we consider that slice don't we because it's a pepper and then we dice it did get a few seeds in despite doing it that way but did you like that little hack I actually saw that on TikTok and TikTok is a bit of a funny thing because the majority of TikTok really does not appeal to me um, but the few sort of five percent is really good right so that's me pepper done uh so the next stage once we've done the onions till soft and start to curl, stir in the pepper and the paprika with the remaining tablespoon of oil so let's go back to the onions see how they're getting on so because i've covered them with a lid it stopped them from burning i don't know what the science of it but there it is they're almost done you can kind of feel them they feel almost mushy if you can squash them they're they're, they're softened Get my pan a bit more central. If you don't get it central, 
you do, it doesn't cook evenly and of course the pan falls off because the pan is designed to sit over the ring. I'm going to call those done. So, uh, let me check how much paprika we need. We need, can't find it, two teaspoons of paprika. So, in goes peppers. And that's a teaspoon, a small one. Now, when the recipe has a B in it, it's a tablespoon, which is a bigger one. If there's no B, then a smaller one. So, and another tablespoon of oil. So, this is a tablespoon. Basically, it's a dessert spoon. Although I believe if you put in the recipe one dessert spoon, I think that's a different measurement than tablespoon, but I'm not 100% sure. But you don't often see dessert spoon written in the, using, using the ingredients. So we have this lovely combination of peppers, paprika, and onion. So I'm just going to cut that pepper. It's a little bit of a big chunk. Right, so the pepper mix and stir fry for further one to two minutes. The pan should have lots of crispy brown bits at the bottom, which will add flavour. So when you're stirring it, you're going to have to push along the bottom just to pick up any little bits that have, let's use the word starting to burn. Um, I believe the more appropriate term would be starting to char. And then char grilled. I wish there was better light in here, you know. But this is, um, this is kind of like a couple of people said to me ages ago, what do I need to start streaming? And I said, you stream with whatever you have, and then you figure out where your problems are, where you can make improvements. And that's pretty much what I'm doing with this kitchen. I can't bring my computer through. Um, so I'm making do with a laptop and two cheap cameras. And that's just the way it is. So we stirred those in. We've got little bits of on the bottom. So with the heat still quite high, quickly stir in the rice so it is well coated in the oil. Then pour in the saffron infused stock plus 450 ml of boiling water. So bear with me for a sec, I'm just going to reboil the kettle. Uh, right, and I need to get the... Oh, I just need to get the scales out as well. Um, rice is something that I tend to go a little bit more uh, precise on with the measurements because um, I think paella rice, I think it absorbs more liquid than long grain rice. Um, so obviously, if you put extra rice in, uh, then the whole thing's going to be quite dry, uh, and if you don't put enough in, then it could be a little bit wet. So, rice, paella rice, 250 grams. So, I'm just weighing the rice out. Anyway. 247, 48, 49, 50. So, so what we're going to do, we have the stock ready here, which has been infusing quite nicely. And I'm going to give that a little bit of a stir, just because if any of the, any of the stock might have just sunk to the bottom. And I'm going to use that jug to measure the 450 ml of extra water. 
awesome. Nice bit coming on these edges here, look. So, in goes the rice, like so. And we are going to very quickly stir that around until we know that every single piece of rice is coated in that oil. And that's easy to tell when it's done because with the oil being orange, obviously the rice is going to go orange. So in that goes. Right, so the rice is in. So now we add the stock. Oh. And you can hear the sizzle go because obviously it's not frying it anymore. Give that a mix. And then we want another, did we say 450 grams? Yeah, 400, sorry, 50, 50 milliliters. Sorry, bear with me, sir. So this is going to be the only stage where I'm going to be measuring as exact as I can. Um, because it's obviously it absorbs the water and the, and the rice needs to work together. And I don't want, you know, if you, again, you know, if you put too much rice in and then not enough water, um, don't know how it's going to turn out. So tomatoes, peppers, onion, chicken. If you don't put the exact amount in, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. Well, it doesn't make as much difference. So, um, right. And I'm, I'm kind of washing the pan with the water to get everything off the side. Obviously, I'm not using a, a washing up brush, brush or anything, but when you're frying, it's hard to get those bits off the side. Um, but once you've got a bit of water in, it softens it all. Um, just wherever I can feel anything, I can just scrape it all off the bottom with these. And I think there's quite a bit going on in this corner. So I'm just kind of washing that pan. It's so funny, I'm just noticing my voice is changing based on what I'm doing. Uh, if I'm frying and I'm moving everything around, my voice is going to be rubber. But because I'm being quite gentle, my voice has become gentler. And I just noticed that myself. So you can see that the water is mostly red. Um, to be honest with you, I think we've coated that, that rice in oil. As soon as you put stock in, it's probably washed it all off. So... Right, so now we can just chill and relax a little bit. Um, make sure we follow the recipe properly, uh, which is what I didn't do last time I made this. I did make it prop in, properly in the end. Um, so we are scraping up the wrong one. Return the browned chicken pieces to the pan, then add the chopped tomatoes, cover the pan, Right, so chicken can go in. So let's go back. So that one, I think I've got the wrong, yeah, I've got the wrong camera. So chicken going in. That's why I'll put the whole plate in and get all those juices off. That's going in. Oh, excuse me, my nose is, I think it's all the spices and things that I'm using is uh, clearing my nose out. This is why, one of the reasons why I do like spicy food. Um, it does do absolute wonders. I think so many health benefits. Uh, add the chopped tomatoes. So let's do the tomatoes. And it is rough chopped tomato, that's all we have to do. Um, my rough chopped tomatoes are probably not 
not as rough chopped as they mean, but to me, a rough chopped tomato is cut it in half, cut through the middle, and then cut twice. And I can tell that my knife is not that sharp anymore. Um, tomatoes are brilliant in that sense because the skin is quite tough to cut. And if your knife isn't super sharp, you're going to struggle to get through it. So I'm managing okay with it. But obviously... It's a lot more efficient if you have a really sharp knife. Just cut all the tomatoes first, and then we can just get straight into it. So, in half, chop, chop. That's a little bit bruised, so I'm going to be a little bit fussy, and I'm going to just discard that. I suppose you could use a tin of tomatoes, um, but I don't really know how much different it would be. But then again, if, if you could use a tin of tomatoes, would the recipe say that? Oh, excuse me. So that's the tomatoes. We'll just pop those in. So they go in like so, and you can see that the water's called the liquid to the oil. And obviously by the time it's finished cooking, these tomatoes are all going to smolt down. So you will get tomato skins in them. If you don't want tomato skins in there, you can peel them. And they're ever so easy to peel because all you need to do is just pop them, just cut a little incision in the tomato. And then just get the, light the gas hole and just like a marshmallow and that will help heal it um, but I, I don't have a problem uh, cover the pan cook on a medium heat for 10 minutes stirring once or twice then we scatter the prawns and the peas and the fried chorizo cover again and cook for a further five to ten minutes so the time now is five to six so we'll give that a stir at about six o'clock and then about five past six that should just about be ready you can see that the uh, the rice is just starting just getting to that point where it's almost ready to explode and cook so uh, cover so I'm going to have to get my massive frying pan because I don't have a lid for this. So that's the best I can do lid-wise. Um, so that's it for five, ten minutes. So how are you finding that, guys? Um, I actually don't think it's that difficult to cook. It's one of those things that looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. Excuse me, just finishing off some um, world famous beverage made by a company that I won't mention, um, just in case. So this is the stage where I would have a tidy up now, um, because the more tidying up we do now, the less we have to do later on. Um, but obviously I'm trying to present the show, so don't think I'm being messy. Um, and yeah, so this is where maybe I'd make myself a cup of coffee, uh, maybe go out for a cigarette. Um, let's just turn that up a little bit. So yeah, we'll give that a stir in a few minutes. Um, so let's do a little bonus, shall we? Bonus number one. Um, I have been dying to make mush peas for absolutely ages all of the ingredients now mushy peas is a two-part stage two two stage two stage cook um the first stage we need to soak the peas for a minimum 
of 12 hours. So bear with me while I go and get the ones I've been soaking. So last, so la last night I soaked some dried marrow fat peas. Now, if you follow a recipe and it tells you to use frozen peas or this peas or that peas, anything other than um, dried, dried marrow fat peas, um, in my opinion, do not follow the recipe. Um, let me show you a dried marrow fat pea. Uh, so this is a dried marrow fat pea. Totally, totally inedible. Um, they're very similar to baking peas. Uh, in fact, you could use these for baking peas, but once you've used them as baking peas, don't have to use them to cook with. So what I have done uh, at least 12 hours ago, uh, let me find a little recipe. It's the simplest recipe you'll have. Uh, so I have um, popped in two tablespoons of baking, sorry, 230 grams of dried peas. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I have put two tablespoons of baking powder. Um, it's just coming up for six o'clock, so let me just stir this um, to eat so. I'll just give you the camera shot because it's starting to look quite nice. So, give that a stir. It says once or twice, but um, you can see that the, the rice is becoming much more dominant. Oh, I, can't, I can't lift it, it's got too much weight in it. So as you stir it, you can see that rice is starting to cook and expand. In fact, all of that moisture will go. So and you can see it's quite a size of the mat. Um, so going back to the peas, um, so we have, I've just seen a comment come in. Geordie Dave, hello Geordie Dave, he says evening everybody. So I have taken uh, 230 grams of dried peas. I've just sprinkled over two tablespoons of baking powder and I have, oh, butter comes later. Um, so I've just covered that in boiling water. The whole thing is fizzled up. It's like pouring a big, big bottle of lemonade and left them for 12 hours and really, really hard to see. But can you see the difference? This one is the, is the soaked pea. Still inedible. It's very very hard but you can see that you couldn't do that to a dried pea um this one is well that's just flown off so right so the next stage then for these peas as i say I've, these have actually been on the go now for more like 18 hours it, it doesn't matter if you if you pull oh, so i just took the lid off that tree so uh paella it's amazing. Right, so what we need to do then is drain that off, give them a little rinse, and I've actually got a brand new colander. Um, I bought this today. Um, I actually, what I actually bought was this, this one. Um, because if I'm draining anything big and I want to drain it to the sink, this is actually sink size. Push it out like this, and the handles come out so they fit in the sink. But I wasn't sure, I couldn't remember if I had a colander and put some holes in for things like rice. So I picked this up, and it turns out I have already got one, but let's face it, that one's a lot more fun, isn't it? So, sorry guys, I won't be able to show you this. Uh, well, no, I can't because I've got things on the sink. So what I'm going to do is pour those peas into the colander. I'm going to give them a little rinse. And I'm just going to leave them for a minute or two. And then I'm going to reboil the kettle because I'm going to need hot water. And 
how are we doing for time for the uh, paella? So we've got a good eight minutes yet. So what we're going to do then is we are going to boil that in 650 milliliters of water. Um, pop them into a pan like this and we're just going to boil them. Simmer them for about 30 minutes. Um, probably put a lid on them. So, uh, oh, stirred up, stirred up the comments here, haven't I? Lovely, I've never seen dried peas. Um, I guess it depends on the call for it, uh, where you are. If not many people eat mushroom peas or, or do things with dried peas, then obviously the shops aren't going to sell them. I'm just going to turn this paella down because it's boiling away, and I don't want it to boil, I want it to simmer. Um, sorry. So obviously in Britain, the mushy pea is a little bit more uh, more common ingredient. So obviously they'll sell them, but you don't use them just for mushy peas. Um, so let's check. That's handy. There's a little sticker on this, which has got to come off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it back on and out of there, which is about 650 milliliter. Right. So, let's just hope these measuring jugs can stand up to boiling water. Um, I did get them from, uh, how should we describe it? A certain shop where you can buy things for a single coin. Uh, I think in America they call them a dollar store. Right, so I think I'm going to need a big, no, I think I'll be okay with that. So I'm going to pour that in. Yeah, I'm going to need a bigger pan. Let me just move this. So there we go. You can salt that if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep it as it is. And I'm going to pop that on. Let's change the cameras. Can't remember which camera is which now. There we go. So, I'm going to pop that onto. Oh, I thought that was my ring that didn't work. I have a ring that doesn't work. So, we're just going to boil that, uh, bring it to the boil, and then we're just going to turn it down to simmer for about half an hour. Uh, so, Tess828 says, My mum used to soak them overnight in a net. Uh, and then Jolly Day says, Them peas look like the ones I put in. It, putting ground to grow. Uh, yeah, I guess they're very similar, aren't they? Uh, oh, I think I forgot something on the, on the paella. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, sorry, no, I, I thought I forgot to put the uh, freezer in and um, okay, it doesn't go into the next stage. So, right. Oh, yeah, that's been cooking too hot. Uh, what's happened is it's starting to stick at the bottom. Uh, it's not a problem, I'm just mixing it all in because it's still enough moisture for any, any bits that I scrape off. It's all, again, it's all flavour. To be honest with you, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to pop... Uh, I'm going to measure up the peas, and I think I think we'll probably then do it. So I'm going to have to take my headphones off. So bear with me while I get the peas. Right, peas, 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 two, 75 grams. Now I'm coming to the end of the bag, so, ah, wasn't that much short actually. Now the forms that I've got, I don't know if I mentioned it, um, I couldn't get fresh prawns. By choice I would always use fresh.
but uh, I haven't been able to this time. Um, so I've got a bag of prawns. Um, I'm going to put them in frozen actually. Um, normally I'd be frosting them. The prawns are among the simplest things to be frost. Um, that is actually time now for the peas and things to go in. Um, to defrost the prawn, the easy way to do it is to grab a handful of frozen peas, run a cold tap, and then just run them under the tap, and it will defrost them almost instantly. Uh, right, so prawns, 250 grams. So we'll go just a little bit over that because we're frozen. So that's going to be just over half a bag, I think. Do you know what? I'm going to chuck the whole bag in. Uh, one bag of frozen prawns where I bought them from is 325 grams. I want to go a little bit over um, because obviously some of that quantity is going to be frozen water. Um, so it only leaves me 25 grams left in the bag, which is really worth keeping. So I'm going to put these in a little bit earlier than the rest. And then these will be defrosted almost instantly. Because they're very delicate. There's actually quite a lot of them in there. Right, so peas in next. And then my experience, the peas always stick to the yeah, like they always stick to the bottom of the jug. So there we go. So that has not come to the boil yet. And then the chorizo can go in next. And that should soften it up a little bit. Look at that. That's all the lovely juices that we couldn't save. Now there's a, a lady, one of our bus cleaners, she's lovely, and she uh, she was saying to me, oh, my favourite favorite dish is, uh, is chorizo, uh, is paella. And I said, you know what, I said, I just have been making paella on Wednesday. And I said, do you want me to bring you some in? And she went, yeah. So, I've got to save some of this. Now, Last time I made this, when I worked out the costs, sorry, I'm just going to pop the peas away in the freezer. I'll be back in a sec. So, um, yeah, when I made this before, I, I actually thought it was... Not too expensive, but quite quite expensive compared to uh, I, being a bus driver and moving around and not having my own kitchen. I, I buy a lot of junk food. Um, so I'm spending sort of eight to 10 pounds a day on food because it's all takeaway stuff. Um, so by comparison, when I worked out how much this cost, I thought it was really, really cheap. Um, Compared to some of the other things that I've been making, um, it's actually quite expensive um, in that <laughs> the cottage pie I made last week was about 68 pence a portion. This is about £1.79 per portion. Um, so you can see why I think it's cheap. Um, but it is, it's a fantastic meal. I think it's worth every penny. And at one pound seventy nine a portion, um, this will this will do six portions quite easily. Um, if you serve it with something, uh, maybe a nice fresh salad, you might be able to make it go further. Um, if you have people who don't have large appetites, so for example, if you've got, I I think this could do uh, mum dad six kids quite easily all of this um, so 
that obviously makes it a lot lot cheaper if you just make it go a little bit further um, so you bulk it out with things like a salad um, make it colorful don't make people love it so much that they want more because um, I've, I've actually bought lemon this time so I'm just going to pop another lid on there I just want to make sure uh, cook for further five ten minutes or until the rice is cooked and most of the liquid in the pan has been absorbed and then with next we will remove the pan from the heat put the lid on and leave to rest for five minutes stir a few times to mix the ingredients season to taste and scatter over the chopped parsley if you're using parsley so my peas are coming up to boil so I'm going to turn those down to a simmer and I'll give them a quick stir and if memory serves me right this is going to go the same way it, as rice goes which is it looks like nothing's going to happen for ages and then all of a sudden all the water's been absorbed so I'm going to turn that right down gentle simmer but I've actually got that on the minimum. I'm just going to pop the lid on with just a tiny go. I don't know if you can see it, but I've just, that's the lid on. I've actually got the lid just slightly slanted. If you've got one of those posh lids with a little hole in the cup on, you could just put the lid on properly and just, um, and just let the steam come out. But um, this is almost done it's a little bit loose uh, with the juice did i just make myself into a color there by accident a bit loose with the juice um so there we go so while i am here I'll do another quick clean up i made a mess absolutely everywhere but um, i have said to you guys before I'm a messy cook, but I do clean up afterwards. So um, I'm wondering if I'm going to have time. I don't know if I'll have time for the other bonus. Um, I'll see how I go. Um, so guys, next week, uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, I've done two. I'm not a vegetarian. Um, I do love my meat. I'm quite happy to reduce the amount of meat that I have. Sorry, my. There we go. Look, that has just. Can you see how that's just happened? Suddenly, all the, sh all the skins have just come off the peas. So, that is soon going to go to much. Really not far off. Um, yeah, so I'm not a vegetarian. Uh, I'm quite happy to eat less meat. But I'm not happy to go meat less. Um, what I also mean by that is that I can do vegetarian food um, and I would like to not exclude vegetarians. Uh, if there's any vegetarians watching, uh, I'm quite happy to embrace vegetarian food, um, but I am of the opinion that you, sh you, know, you should go around forcing vegetarianism on people um same as i won't force eating meat on people sorry that's a bit of a strong opinion i have and i do apologize um but i would like to include vegetarians in this um so i thought next week rather than dealing with a dish we'll deal with an ingredient um so i'm going to be doing three things to do with a courgette assuming i can find some courgettes uh, and I'll do three wonderful dishes. Uh, one of them, two of them will be uh, a side dish, possibly the third one. Uh, and one of them is going to be super quick and easy. And so fresh and lovely. Um, so we have got our mushy peas on the simmer. And they're going to take about half an hour to cook. We're just waiting for this last bit of liquid to absorb in the uh on the on the uh paella um 
So I think I'm going to cheat slightly with the peas. I'm just going to turn them up slightly. Um, I really should be using a pan properly. I don't know if you know this trick, but when you have a spoon, most pans have a hole on the end and it's just a convenient place to put your spoon. So, I'm just a little bit worried about the time, I'll be honest with you there guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get everything done. Um, to read, uh, sorry, the paella is a little bit labour intensive as compared with, say for example, a cottage pie. But I think you'll agree it's worth it. That's pretty much nearly done. There might be a little bit too much liquid in there. Um, do you know what? Actually, I'm going to just test it. So if you remember when we taste, we use a two spoon method. If you live on your own, it really doesn't matter. But obviously you don't want to be putting your spittle into the food. Hygienic. Um, but secondly, your mouth contains enzymes which is designed to break down food. I don't know if you've ever eaten a whole uh, thick soup, but as you're eating it, eventually the, the soup goes really thin. It's because you've got enzymes on your spoon that you put back in. So when we taste, we just get it, and then we drop it onto our spoon. This spoon never comes in contact with the food. This spoon never comes in contact with that spoon. And that's just the way we taste. And despite blowing that, that was extremely hot. So that rice is done. So what I'm going to do, according to the recipe, uh, remove the pan from the heat, put the lid on and leave for, to rest for five minutes. Um, so heat coming off, actually the heat's not going to come off. What I'm going to do, so I'm going to transfer it to the back of the uh, cooker and then I can use this ring, which is a stronger ring, to do my peas. And they're starting to go mushy. Yeah, still hard on the middle. Right, so that's my mushy peas. So, what I'm going to do, the paella just needs to rest for five minutes. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do things properly. So let's make a really nice, quick, easy food. Come home late at night, you've had a terrible day at work. A nice bit of comfort food. Has anybody ever heard of uh, microwave chocolate cake in a mug? because uh, that's what I'm going to make for you now. Um, this is wonderful, it's tasty, it's just nice, it's, it's naughty enough, and it takes about five minutes to cook, literally five minutes to cook. Um, so this is my second bonus for you guys. So we take, results may vary because of the size of the mug and the ingredients that you're putting in, um, but just like most processes, we go dry ingredients, wet ingredients. Um, and I use a spoon and a whisk. And I need something from over there, but I can't think what it is. Eggs. There will be one sec. Need to get an egg. Now, word of warning, guys, this is, when I cook this, it actually rises so high, I actually get frightened it's going to hit the ceiling on, on the microwave. Um, but it's just, it's wonderful. Uh, and when you do finish cooking it, it does 
um, it does sink a little bit. So two tablespoons of self-raising flour. I'm not a big fan of self-raising flour. I normally use plain and then use baking powder, but obviously self-raising has its uses. Um, so let's get the lid back on there. Oh, just got caught up on the uh, on the worktop. So next we have two tablespoons of caster sugar. And sorry guys, I put two in there, didn't I? It should have been four. So I do apologize. So let's put another two flowers in and another two sugars. And then we want, uh, if I can find it, here we go. Now we should use cocoa. Cocoa is the best for this, um, but I couldn't find cocoa, so I've used hot chocolate. It's not really the same, um, but it's it's a very fair substitute. Um, so we have got a mix that has nearly filled the, spoon, the uh, cup up with the back of the spoon. We we'll give that a mix. Like so. Then one egg. And then we mix that as best we can. I wish I could show you this better, but. And then you can see that the uh, dry ingredients are sort of settling a little bit. Uh, next, we want three tablespoons of oil. One, two, three. And if I can remember where I kept it, we want a few drops of vanilla essence. And I'm really not good at, this hasn't got a dropper in it, so I just have to guess. That's about a few drops. To be honest with you, you won't taste the vanilla that much. It's not super strong. Um, it doesn't cut through the chocolate that much. But, so we're going to give that a mix. Get all of the wet ingredients, uh, all the dry ingredients into the mix somehow. And then we can start being a bit more vigorous. Probably might be better off stirring this with a fork. But... If you can get away with a whisk, you get a bit more air in there. And I would say that that mix is about right. And as the fun begins, if you watch this cook, you will absolutely panic. Um, because it rises so much, I'm frightened I was going to have to scrape it off the scraper on top of the microwave. So, three minutes in the microwave, as you can probably hear my microwave going, and check on it halfway. The, the, the original recipe that I found it from actually says a minute and a half to two minutes. Uh, I'm finding with, with my microwave and the quantities in the cup that I'm using, uh, three minutes is a little bit better. It's a bit more like it. So I think this chorizo paella is ready. So let's have a look. So, uh, get that stir. Oh, that's wonderful. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, and do you know what? I just caught a whiff of the prawns. So they're nice. And let's pretend we're a posh hotel. We'll plate that up. So. Let's get a lemon. 
And do you know what? I was worrying about everything coming together, but I, I think it's all come together towards the end. So let's take a lemon. I bought three lemons just so that I could cut a wedge of lemon for you guys. So just cut through until the, uh, see that's not cut through enough. I want the actual fruit exposed. Absolutely beautiful. And another good thing about this, because we've been dealing with garlic, we might have smelly fingers. So rub your fingers in, in, the, in the lemon, not, not lemon that you're about to serve. But cut that into about eight if you want. Um, so, you know, if we do this as an eight portion paella, then we've got eight, eight pieces of lemon. Uh, or you can serve two pieces of lemon each. Uh, so we've got uh, David Bass has just joined us. Good evening, Chef Penny. How are you, my good friend? Uh, the peas are almost done, but not quite. Uh, the paella is most certainly done. So let's plate some of this up. So we'll pretend that's a big plate with a piece of lemon and our pudding has just come out. One microwave and it didn't hit the ceiling. Now normally I would eat that straight out of the mug but I want to show you guys um, what it's like. So I will be cutting it out. actually not as big as I normally make it I made it a couple of times yesterday um, so yeah as I say you would eat it out of the mug normally um, but I'm doing I'm cutting out just to show you look at that oh I wish you could smell it look at that absolutely amazing um, and look how long did it take me so a um, little bit of a salad with that. I wouldn't serve the mushy peas with a paella. I know that this isn't Spanish, um, but word of warning about this. I think that's a little bit overcooked. Yeah, gone a little bit hard, a little bit overcooked. But this goes very hard and stale very quickly simply because there's no preservatives in it. Uh, when you make cakes, um, obviously this is, this is um, it's got those same ingredients as cake, but in a different format. You know, you might put butter in. Um, this has only got oil in it. Um, so David Bassett says, I'm having a quick slurp of alcoholic. Uh, I'm actually having pretend alcohol that we can always pretend there's something in there. I won't tell anyone that it's a sugar-free vanilla Coke. Um, so, guys, that's just about it. Um, I can't fully show you the mushy peas for the simple reason that they're not quite there yet. But you can see that they're getting there. They are almost, almost there. Um, so once they're done, they will be requiring seasoning, probably. Um, depends what you have. If you have um, fish, chips, mashy peas, it may not need so much seasoning because if you're like me, you chuck loads of salt over your peas and, uh, sorry, over your chips salt over your chips that's what i meant to say and uh the peas just balance things out a little bit um so shall we do a taste um so david also says i'm good thanks it's pepsi 12th birthday so happy to, happy birthday uh sugar-free vanilla coat with gin in it do you know what i'm going to disappoint you now and say i'm actually not a gin fan um, really do not like gin. Um, I could have other things in it, but um, 
But yeah, it's just the trouble is I just don't drink if I'm driving the next day, um, which means I can never really drink. But you know, do I really miss out by not having alcohol? Uh, David Bass, it looks like you're enjoying it. Sugar free Coke is fine. Vodka. Now, I'll tell you a funny story. When I used to be able to drink, I used to drink double Bacardi's and Coke. And I went to play pool with a friend of mine. And uh, we were having doubles. And we were going his round, my round, his round, my round, so on and so forth. And uh, we had seven rounds. Absolutely fine, playing some pretty good pool. And uh, he says, I said, look, I think that's about the end of the night now. And he says, no, 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 we've got to have one more round. I said, okay, fine. So he got a round in. When I, I thought it was something funny about my drink, but I wasn't sure. And uh, I drank it, and I just I'd start feeling a bit funny. I said, he, he says, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'm fine. So I just feel a little bit funny. He says, well, he goes, well, they ran out of Bacardi. So I got you a double vodka instead. Um, he goes, it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? And I went, no, it's not the same thing. I said, I've just mixed my drinks. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, um, let's just say it's the only time my, um, my drink has come back up again. So these peas are really nice and done now. So let me just pop a little bit on the plate for you. Um, I personally would mix a little bit of, um, um, oh, sorry, guys, I'm over here and you're over there, which is not so good. So um, this is my mushy peas. As you can see, they're a little bit runny. Um, if you don't like them that runny, then don't put quite so much water in. If you want them runny, you can put more water in. Um, but if you add a little touch of mint sauce, uh, you buy it ready made, it's basically vinegar and mint. Um, that will actually thicken that up and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so unfortunately I can't share this with you, but I'm gonna do a taste test and I'm gonna be absolutely honest. In fact, I'm gonna change my camera. Um, so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So. Hmm. The chorizo is a little bit hard. Um, nice hard. The actual flavours are fine. I don't think that needs any seasoning. Um, the rice isn't hard. Um, I, I love the colours on it, the little specks of red and little specks of green. And the prawn just comes through. Not too hot, not too much. Proportionally, I would say that's absolutely fantastic. Peas probably aren't anything to get excited about, unless you have fish and chips. Very, very hot, be careful. Hmm. Yeah, they are, they're one step away from being able to eat them with a straw. Um, you know, you could almost drink them, it's a little bit too thick. Once this goes cold, um, it'll go really, really thick as well. Um, but I mean, can stir through some butter. That will just give them a bit of a richness. They are quite bland because I've not salted. Um, so I'd advise you to salt to taste. To be honest with you, I would salt these at the table. Um, but other than that, they are, that's what I call, I have a problem with mushy peas. Um, when you go to fish and chip shops, there are so many fish and chip shops that they'll go mushy peas and then you, uh, you buy them. There's, there's a chip shop in, in Bristol and you'll ask for mushy peas and it just literally pours uh, marrow fat peas, hasn't even drained them, just all over your fish and chips. And you're like, you just spoiled it now. Um, this is absolutely perfect. Absolutely spot on. The consistency is perfect. It's just the seasoning. I'm having this how I like it. Um, 
bit of mint sauce, bit of salt and pepper. Absolutely brilliant. And as David Bassett says there, um, you need a pie of fish and chips for those mushy peas. Absolutely spot on. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, this has been overcooked. Um, that's my fault, not yours. Sorry. My fault, not the recipe's fault. Um, this is the third time I've made this and it's the first time I've popped it up. But isn't it wonderful that you've got something that you can make in what one minute prep time three minutes or two minutes cooking time less than five minutes how many times do you come in hungry but just can't be bothered to do something um so david bassett says you're making me hungry penny i've just popped a lancashire hot pot oh lancashire hot pot have to wait 50 minutes but lancashire hot pot that is worth a 50 minute wait isn't it um right guys so I'm happy. At least I've done the right quantity of ingredients this time. Last week, if you remember, I didn't do enough potato to cover the cottage pie. That's me not reading the recipe properly. Um, sorry, I love this um, paella. It's amazing. I love it. Um, <coughs> sorry. So next week, we're going to be doing three things with courgettes. Uh, three, three, three things involving courgettes. Um, I won't tell you exactly what they are, um, but it's more of a side dish. There are things that can go with something. Maybe, do you know what? I think one of them would go with this paella actually. So, and then one is probably a vegetarian may. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it for this week. Um, David, I hope you enjoy your Lancashire hot pot. Uh, I know you will if you got it in the oven, at least you're cooking. Um, so if you want to leave a comment in the actual proper comments below, is this something that you'd, you'd have a go? Um, is it, do you think it's a little bit complicated? What did you think of the peas? What did you think of the microwave cake? I love the microwave cake. Um, it's a lot more common. I've known about this for, for quite a few years now. Um, oh, there is one thing I didn't include, and that is you can put in a handful of uh, cho ch uh, chocolate chips, and that would go very nicely in there. I haven't got any, and I'm not overly bothered by them anyway. Um, but it's a, just a nice little indulgent little uh, little cake. Um, but like I say, it has to be eaten straight away. You have to eat the whole lot because it does go stale. It goes like toast um, within about within about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, but as long as you eat it before then, really, really nice. But if you use cocoa, rather than hot chocolate as I have, you get a much more intense chocolate taste. Um, so yeah, so that's it guys. Um, oh, I just remembered, I do apologize. I have not done the, uh, um, the schedule. And I don't know if I can find it. YouTube announcements. Sorry. Right. Okay, guys. So tonight we have got at eight o'clock, we've got Bill with Adrian doing the part work show. Um, he's doing issue 57 of the Spitfire and fitting them over for the wing flaps. Uh, Thursday and Friday is going to be at the earlier time of seven o'clock. That's on Horlick's uh, channel. Uh, Thursday he's doing the Terminator issue 102-103 and on Friday he's doing the Spitfire issue 45 and 46. So again I repeat it's the earlier time of 7 o'clock. Saturday we've got Chris Davis channel he's doing Jaguar that's at 8 o'clock. Uh, we've got nothing on for Sunday but who knows someone might come up with something. Uh, Monday we've got Chris Campling he's doing Terminator at 8 o'clock. That's quite often with a dual stream with Chris uh, Davis. Um, don't know if it is this week. I assume it is. Tuesday, we have Bill with Adrian. He's doing Build a Ferrari issue F, uh, Ferrari. Uh, start that up again. Build a Ferrari F40 issue 35, the air diffuser. That's at his usual midweek time of 7 o'clock. And then Wednesday, we've got 
Yorkshire Craft with myself at two o'clock doing the diamond painting show. And then at five o'clock, we've got Ready Penny Cook. Three things to do with a courgette. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I'll just catch the rest of the comments and then I'll, I'll say goodbye. Um, so we have got Fleetwood Joy, Jay. Hi at all. Hope everything is okay. Great show, Penny. Thank you for Fleetwood. I really appreciate any support from anybody. And again, feedback is, is very important to me because um, obviously you can help steer the show. Um, you know, it's like I've done two meaty, meaty meals. Uh, so if it, you know, I'd like to, I'd love to get the vegetarians involved, have a little bit for everybody. Um, so that's why I'm doing the courgettes next week. Um, David Bass, it looks an interesting idea that might go away the cake. It, it's, it's actually really nice if you don't overcook it like I have. Uh, right, guys, so I've got some eating to do. So I will catch you next week. Um, you guys all take care, and hopefully I can get you guys in the kitchen um, just cooking something and giving you ideas. Until then, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.